Soho is a neighborhood in Lower Manhattan. It is bounded by Houston Street, Canal Street, Cross by Street, and 6th Avenue. Soho is an acronym for South of Houston Street and is typically known for its glamour, fashion, architecture, and art. The history of how Soho became known for these things is actually quite interesting. Soho started out as a residential neighborhood, however during the 1800s it became a commercial center as the wealthy and middle class came to settle there. And because of this, businesses, hotels, theaters, stores, mansions, and casinos sprung up on Broadway. Also, Soho became the city's first red light district. As industries grew in Soho, people began to move to more residential areas, and between the years 1860 and 1865, the population of Soho declined by one quarter. So, and so small firms, companies, textile houses, and inexpensive clothing outlets began to move into Soho. And because of the low rent and the, and the availability of space, many people, especially artists, began to move into Soho. However, Soho entered a period of gentrification in the, in the 1980s, as more affluent residences began to settle in Soho, there was a spike in rent and property values. But more importantly, some of the lower class were displaced and Soho's character and culture changed. Soho became more expensive and became known as a luxurious center, and it is now an upper-class neighborhood. Despite the gentrification, many artists remained in Soho, but others chose to move to Chelsea. With the influx of the rich, Soho became a center of shopping and luxury. Of course, Soho is also known for its cast iron architecture, and it is worth noting that Soho has the largest concentration of cast iron architecture than anywhere else in the world. Yes, yes. Jacques Lieberman. My name is Alistair Hutchison. My name is Abid. Jacob Robert. This is my art gallery. Everything shown here is my work. I'm working at Loomis Gallery here in Soho. We do mostly photography. Um, we're a German-based gallery and we host a few different artists and they get to live the life, travel, and take photos and do their art. Uh, and we're here, we just sell it for them. It's internal really, nothing external. My work is abstract, it's non-representational, and it's really what I feel like. I like to work visually. Uh, if you take a look at my art, you'll see it's all really little worlds created that weren't there before. Just to see the world in a different way. Some other way that I've never seen. No, I don't. I live in Murray Hill. Yes, I do. No, I don't. I live on the... Right now, I live on the Upper West Side with some family of mine. Oh, uh, no, I'm going to be honored. No, we were originally made. Um... I think it doesn't have, like, that industrial feeling that, like, New York has. And, like, you know, Fi Dye and then Midtown, it feels very... A little bit, it's like hectic, but in like a calmer way. I don't know how to describe that. It's a lot of good food places and a lot of good shopping. So I think that makes it unique. Well, Soho was an industrial area and it became an art center where artists came to because there were uh, cheap lofts, available spaces. But it has changed ever since. A lot of galleries started opening up. Culture. 
It's uh, just the streets, everything about it, it's just got a different feel from anywhere else in Manhattan. Um, I'm pretty new to Manhattan myself. I've only been here for a few months. By far, so has uh, it's kind of like walking back in time a little bit. You can feel like you know it's where the old factories and everything used to be, on everything like that. It's just it's it's interesting. It's, it's the aesthetic gives it a different feel. You can find everything here. You know, a lot of stores, rooms, right here. Um, or maybe Puma, everything here. So you can find anything you want. So that's why. You need. I don't know, it's, I think it's kind of cool that it used to be one of the poorest neighborhoods in the country and now it's probably the most expensive. It's shopping. It is known for being an art center. Many galleries <laughs> here. At a peak, there were over 200 galleries. Now, uh, another neighborhood has taken over, Chelsea, the west side of Manhattan. But there's still a sizable number of galleries here. As far as art goes, this is the place where you're going to find it's, you know, your reprints of like Picasso's and things like that. Um, just like really high end art. Um, a lot of it's fashion based as well. Yeah, I would say I would say the fashion. You go that way. It's nothing but like high end fashion. Like you got your Gucci. So is a place, you know, very famous. Everybody know about Soho. Most people come to nice days, they just try to come to Soho. Because you can find everything in Soho. I think that's why Soho is very popular. Fashion is known for a lot of things, but that's one thing that comes to mind. Art? I think it's anything that inspires people. So it could be a painting, it could be you know, a 3D object, it could be anything. It's pretty broad. One definition might be creating something that wasn't there. It's it's anything and everything that you deem to be something, something more than just what you see. And even then, it could be pure embodiment of experience. Art. Art doesn't, it's one of those strange things that doesn't have a definition, but yet we try to define it all the time. Um, you know, to the, to the engineer that designs toilets, you know, he wants to figure out a way to make this more efficient. He's going to design it, he's going to do everything like that. You know, something like that to him or her, it's a, that's a lot. To somebody that does paintings, photography, something like that, it's, it's art. It's seeing the world in a different way eyes that you haven't seen before. Um, <laughs> that is a complicated question. Um, I guess the simplest answer would be artistic expression. I, just any any method that you can express yourself with. There's like a lot of people who do it on the street, kind of like those people who are like the you know, like that spray paint artist or like people who draw like those characters or like jewelry making people. I think mostly on the street. Yeah. Oh, walk up and down West Broadway. There are a few galleries right here on Bloom Street, and Spring Street, Prince Street. Uh, there's a couple of galleries. If you just walk down to the corner here, take a right. Uh, there's a couple of galleries down there. Um, How I think of the artists coming here? Because it's everything, everything, everything here. You know, so they just come here. You know, you know, to, to see different things you can don't, you cannot see nowhere else. Only in Seoul. So I think that's why people like to come to That's why I think that's why they come. Literally, or yeah, well, literally. that's also complicated. Uh, various galleries, as well as there's tons of street art, which I guess many people wouldn't consider art, but I would. A lot of graffiti.
The artwork we chose to document was not a single work, but rather we documented the works of Robert Dutesco. Dutesco's work consists of photographs of wild horses from the Isle, island of Sable Island. Wild Horses of Sable Island Gallery tells the story of pit ponies destined for the coal mines of Nova Scotia. About 400 wild horses were being transported on ships, but because of the strong wind currents, about 475 ships got shipwrecked on the shores of Sable Island, which is about 100 miles off the coast of Nova Scotia. The first recorded shipwreck was one of Sir Humphrey Gilbert's ships in 1583. The horses found their way onto this 42 kilometer in length and 1.5 kilometer in width, which is island, which is about the length of Manhattan and the width of Central Park, and is also known as the Graveyard of the Atlantic. The island offers not a single sheltering tree, just seagrass and rainwater ponds, so the horses have learned to live off the land. Shipwrecked sailors, transported convicts, and pirates temporarily occupied the island, but in 1960, things changed. As part of the Canadian Shipping Act, the Canadian government declared the horses fully protected and no longer able to be rounded up and sold. The gallery that we attended was created by Roberto Dutesco, who has been studying the horses and documenting them throughout photography, through photography for over three decades. Although the island is now closed off to travelers, the Canadian government gave Dutesco special permission. His first trip to the island was in 1994. Interestingly, the horses exhibit no fear of humans, since they have no natural predators. Over time, Dutesco learned the ways of the horses and created a full-length documentary entitled, entitled Chasing Wild Horses. Dutesco commonly annotates his artwork with themes, including the Sable Island journal entries, astrology, nautical-inspired drawings, maps, and geographical information. All of Dutesco's photography comes from the old ways of camera, negative, development, and printing techniques. New technologies such as chromogenic printing are incorporated in his work. However, the original is always a negative that has been scanned to accommodate special printing techniques, such as metallic prints, platinum prints, or oversized prints not available in silver gelatic gelatin printing. Through the use of these techniques, Dutesco has captured beautiful moments in the lives of the horses and will continue to pursue his passion for the years to come. In general, in a natural habitat, I've learned that if you give respect to what's in front of you, uh, that respect will always be returned. The photographs, they are gifts that are being offered on a plate. And I think that those gifts, on some occasions, are being offered just to you. You can, of course, choose to take advantage of that, those moments, or, or you can just experience that moment for your own self.
Ha <laughs> ha!